Hello, welcome to this section 1B. We will be covering the evolution of OS. Most important ones are Windows and Linux, which we will see the little bit of history of them. And then the market share of different operating systems in the currently in the market. And what are the OS objectives and different layers uh, and views of computer systems. First evolution, in the early 1960s and 70s, mainframe was there. Era means the long history, distinct period of history. Mainframes are the computers used primarily for by large organizations for critical applications. Bulk data processing in those days, okay. And data collections like sensors and earthquakes and analyzing, analyzing those uh, huge data, amount of data. IBM was very popular building the systems which are called mainframes and the OS360 or Multix was running on them. It was way back in 1960s. Then in 1970, Unix came up, which was written completely in C, where the C language was also designed and evolved. And uh, a good feature of writing an operating system in C is you can actually port the operating system onto multiple processes. Whereas earlier days, these operating systems were not developed in a high level language like C, which was difficult for porting the operating system when i say porting means running an operating system on different architectures because you know that software is also evolving that like wires and applications and different languages are coming up and similarly the hardware and cpu designs and gpu with new features are coming so we need to have operating system continuously being ported onto different architectures which are coming in the market so if you write an operating system in a high level language like c it is only sufficient that you compile them on different processes and develop or come out to the assembly of those assembly instructions of those implementation of operating system in C, then run it on those CPUs. So portability is very important and that has been achieved by writing an entire operating system in a higher level language like C. Then came 1980s and 90s where microcomputer era started and personal computers. The computers earlier, it was only available at the organization level, not as an individual level. Whereas in 1980s, 60s, each one of us started owning you know, uh, computers, wherein personal computers came into picture, which are PCs. Then different operating system, systems also evolved during that time. Disk operating system, which is the OS from the Microsoft. Then came Windows, which is the main difference between the DOS and Windows is focus on UI, focus on Windows based or graphics based user interfaces. So that became very popular and caught on and Mac also came up with a beautiful uh, interface for the users. So comfort and usability are the most important features of OS and that actually caught on and Windows uh, became popular during those 1980s and 90s. MS-DOS is Microsoft Disk Operating System. Then came from 1995 to 2005 internet era where the communication and internet working of different computers over in the country or the world was the focus and the networking grew into different sizes and we, we were able to communicate between different computers and then Linux emerges during that time which is a OS of the internet. Then let me talk about LAMP stack which is uh, open source okay in uh, term open source means that the software is contributed by different people who are knowledgeable as well as interested in contributing to the common cause of the society and the main feature of the open source software is that it is not owned by any individual company or organization or a corporation that means it is free to use then anybody can take the implementation of those uh, open source software and they can adapt it, they can modify it, add features to it and build a product based on them. The only condition is that, that you need to make whatever you are adding features that needs to be made open source. That means you need to share it with the rest of the world. So which caught on in 1990s and we have the entire application stack which was open source. Now you can see that Linux which is an open source software contributed by interested people who are knowledgeable in the area of operating systems and higher level languages. Then 
Apache web server, which are meant for hosting web pages. Then the database, MySQL, which was also open source. Then the languages where we can use any of these languages running on them to build an entire application stack. So this is called LAMP stack, very popularly called as LAMP stack, where L stands for Linux OS, A for Apache HTTP server, MySQL and PHP programming language, which is a hypertext preprocessor. Now, from 2005 to 2015, those decade of distributed applications, wherein applications need not be restricted to one system or uh, one server, which can be distributed across the different part of the world. And one good example of a distributed application is a Google search, where we type in a word to search for a particular thing, then multiple servers in the system or in the world gets contributing to the search of that particular keywords or uh, array of set of words that you are looking for and then the results are ordered and ranked and then the best results are shown to you. So this involves uh, distributed applications running on different Google servers across the world. So then the mobile emerged during that time billions of users are now having mobiles which are much powerful than the computers that we saw in 1980s. Now cloud based distributed applications became very common and virtual machines and you have different systems or uh, uh, cloud based applications can be run and that is the focus of 2015 time frame. Now current trends are hypervisor and docker which are also if you want to understand them you need to have a better understanding of OS. We will be touching upon these things later. Now let us get into windows, birth of windows. It was a company started by two people, Paul Allen and Bill Gates in 1975. And they started building PCs, as you can see the system that they have built uh, earlier were there. Now, in 1975, 75, they started the company Microsoft and they released the Windows 1.0 in 1985. This is the recent photograph and uh, unfortunately Paul Allen is not with us. Evaluation of Windows. These are the different logos of multiple operating systems that they came up with. I'm not going into the de details of each one of them, but there are uh, a good number of operating systems which caught the eyes of people and it was it is very popular and being used across billions of users across the world. Now, if you are interested to know more about the Windows and how it evolved, please get into the history of Windows link that I have provided here. Now, let us look at the market share of operating systems, which is as on 2022. Windows still rules the world and with the 56% of users using the Windows based systems. And then comes Windows 11, which is the next version of the Windows, which is around 8.8%. And the Linux and Mac are the different um, operating systems which are in the market. Other than that, we also have the older, older version of Windows which are being still used in the older machines. Now, other important operating system with that we should all be knowing it and we will be also be using them in this course, which is Linux. It was born in 1991 and Linus Torvalds is a person behind it who started writing the initial versions as well as the features of Linux and he started off with that and a lot of people joined him and it became uh, a phenomenon and Linux rules the world now. You can see the contribution that has come from different people It's 27.8 million lines of code now as on 2020 and it's growing every day. So mostly the Linux is implemented in C and Less than 2% of them is in assembly. Now, you may wonder what part of the operating system needs to be in assembly and why. So, just I'll tell you uh, a overview of why we need assembly also. See, now operating system is meant for running different processes onto the CPU, right? The CPU could be any particular processor, ARM, or it could be Intel x86 or AMD processors or any other uh, CPU, CPUs coming from even Apple and other vendors. 
Now, when an OS has to move one process into the CPU or take out a process from the CPU, it needs to save the context of the CPU. Now, what does that context? The context is the processes when they run on the CPU, they use the registers within the CPU for doing some uh, computations. Now, those registers, whatever values they hold, needs to be preserved so that the process which is being taken out can be brought back to the CPU to start running from where it left off. If we need to do that efficiently, we need to make sure that the state of the CPU at the time when a uh, process is taken out, taken out from the CPU needs to be saved somewhere, which is being actually a part of a process control block, wherein the context or the state of the entire context of a process is saved there which are nothing but the different register contents. Now, you may wonder when I say that different CPUs are there, which can run the OS. Now, you can also imagine that when you are saving the contents of the registers, they need to be different from one CPU to another CPU because the registers are different and the number of registers and the width of the registers are also different based on the versions of the CPU that you are using. So, when you are using the saving the context, of a process or restoring the context of the process, you need to write them in assembly. So that's where the assembly part of the code coming into the operating system. So, which is a smaller portion of it. And moreover, we may also bring assembly programming wherever a critical part of the operating system, which run more often, needs to be efficient in terms of execution, number of cycles. So we can actually make an efficient code only if you write a a completely assembly in assembly language instead of you know though compilers are technology is improving and they are generating assembly code which are as close to the human uh, assembly programs humanly written assembly program but still the better op uh, optimization and efficiency will come when people write assembly code so some of the most efficient or most critical part of the operating system functionality was, is also implemented in assembly so those are the stuff which are used in assembly so that's why i say that less than two percent of the code is in assembly as far as linux is concerned now there is a also a drive now to bring in rust language apart from c which is being uh, used right now in linux to into the kernel which is a recent phenomena that is happening now what are the different distributions of linux now what is the distribution means that the linux kernel as i told you is basically contributed by different open source you know, the, uh, people and then this Linux, the kernel is being used by different distributions wherein they will build other UI or tools around it which is running on basic Linux kernel. So kernel is coming up with their, their own releases you know it's not happening every week but they are having a constant releases every year and then frequent releases and different companies like Ubuntu and then there are Fedora then Debian they all take the latest kernel and then port it port their own GUI as well as any other uh, tools on top of them and as well as um, the environment as well as IDE as well as any of the a desktop environment all those things are added on top of it so that's that's the focus of different distributions of linux this is the musket of linux now linux is also as well as windows is available on different platforms one is desktop which is commonly we see it in our home and it is dominated by windows because of the home users prefer windows and mac compared to Linux because of their exposure to Linux, lack of exposure I would say. Now server operating system is more concentrated on the efficiency and implementation uh, and how fast they are able to serve different services. So you can see that the contribution of Linux is more in server operating systems compared to what you see in desktop environment. Now mobile is again you can see that Linux is the underneath under Android and it is having a major uh, share of mobile operating systems. 
and then iOS is also growing. Now tablet is in between the mobile and desktop wherein you want it to be efficient in terms of power usage because battery operated and meant for portable systems like laptops. So Android is also there in the tablet operating systems. Uh, my major contribution is from Android. And please remember Linux is under, running underneath the Android operating system also. Now, what are the general OS objectives? Let us just quickly go through that. If you are to order from bottom to top, then you can say that OS user and hardware and applications are the one which are shown here. Now, operating system make in, is an interface to the hardware and then it provides some services to the applications and applications are used by the users. So an OS is a program that controls the execution of application programs and acts as an interface between applications and the computer hardware. So that's the purpose of operating system and remember that operating system is completely implemented in software, it's 100% software. That's why I said that portability is important and portable means C plus assembly is what we saw the OS is uh, built with. Now, though OS is completely written in software, it actually comes under the system software flavor of software development because they need to have a good understanding of the hardware because they are the one which is interfacing with the hardware. So, knowledge of hardware is important, but at the same time, remember that operating system is completely implemented in software. And what are the important objective of OS? It should be convenient to use and it should be efficient in the sense when you are using the uh, system to run different applications, OS is of course is required as an interface between different applications, but when it is running on the CPU, OS should take as minimum time as possible and then give maximum time for the applications to run on the CPU. So it should be non-intrusive. But at the same time, you should be able to monitor what is happening in the system and keep a tab on if any application is misbehaving or trying to do something which is illegal or there is a virus or some other um, illegal software is running on the system, OS should be able to stop it. First, first of all, you should be able to find it and then remove it and kill it. So these are the services and is an efficient way of managing the system that OS is supposed to provide us. So it should be efficient in the sense that it should not take too much of time running on the CPU. At the same time, it should not take up more space in the main memory also because we need more space in the main memory for our applications to run. So OS has to be efficient in terms of its running as well as the memory footprint. And of course, it should evolve with respect to the CPU which is being which is also being, uh, I know, advanced and then we are getting new features to be added, are uh, getting added as well as multi-core processors are becoming uh, more common nowadays. Even in our laptops, we are having multiple cores. So the OS also should be having capability to make use of those multiple cores available on the CPUs. So what are the different layers of operating system, uh, computer system? We have a hardware here and the OS running on it and utilities. It could be any compiler or any other tools or any IDE that you can imagine like Visual C++ or any of the IDEs, then application programs could be anything that you can imagine. Now, hardware and software used in providing applications to a user can be viewed as in a layered or hierarchical fashion. Now, the user of those applications or the end user generally is not concerned with what is the hardware based on, whether it is ARM based or Intel based or AMD based, end user doesn't don't doesn't care. So end user is view of computer system in terms of set of applications. They only look at running my own applications efficiently. So this is uh, the most important collection of system programs compared to OS. Okay, uh, system programs is nothing but OS. So OS makes the detail, masks the details of the hardware from the programmer and provides the programmer with a convenient interface for using the system. Okay, so let me take an example of PowerPoint. Suppose you are, uh, I am running a PowerPoint application now in a full screen mode. So it's an application from the end user perspective. Now, is it running? How is what is it built this uh, application program? It was built using Visual C++ libraries or Visual C++ environment, which has come from Microsoft. Now, 
in my system currently OS is Windows so what happens is when they built the PowerPoint application they made use of the APIs provided by the Windows operating system so they are using the services provided by the OS and the files that I am using are opening is using the services provided by the PowerPoint application that is built on Visual C++. So hardware component is CPU, memory, hard disk, everything is involved in the currently while running this PowerPoint uh, presentation and I am moving the mouse and then writing something on my mouth, you know, touchpad. Those things are all captured by the OS and given to this application. Now this is also displaying when I am animating it. So and we also have an interface that PowerPoint provides to take a printout of all the slides that you have. So basically this application is interfacing with the different I.O. devices like touchpad, mouse, keyboard and, and Wacom which is connected to the USB port of my laptop and then we, it also can be interfaced with the printer when you want to take a printout of well, whatever you have files you have. So basically what happens is an application is built using the library here which is making use of the OS for providing all the services that an application or an end user wants from the PowerPoint application here. So Windows APIs are the software interfaces provided by the Windows OS to the applications enabling them to use various hardware components. So these are different views of OS. So let us see in the next lecture. Bye-bye.